Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the different types of fruits. Now again fruits are categorized into various types on many different uh, bases. So on the basis of origin, so how that fruit originated, from which part of the plant the fruit originated, based on that fruits are categorized into two types, true fruit and false fruit. So what is a true fruit and what is a false fruit? True fruit is a fruit which develops from the ovary of flower. So the fruit which develops from the ovary of flower is known as a true fruit. Now you might be wondering, just now I was explaining that the ripened ovary is fruit. So how come a situation will come where a fruit will not develop from ovary? Now there are certain fruits where the, where the fruit which we actually eat or which we are actually talking about doesn't develop from the ovary. It develops from some other parts of the flower. Most of the fruits are true fruits, but there are some fruits which are not true fruits. So we will look at the examples. Examples of true fruits would be tomato, grapes, banana. Now, let me remind you, tomato is a fruit. It is not a vegetable. Many people feel that tomato is a vegetable, but basically it is a fruit which we eat. So if you see here, you have tomato, grapes and banana so these are nothing but the ovary so they are actually the ripened ovary but if when i talk about false fruits they are fruits which develop from other parts than ovary so it is not from the ovary maybe from some other parts from ovary now it can be derived from uh, ovary plus some part of other plants it can be developed from completely some parts of other plant. So example of false fruits are apple and pear. Now let us try to understand both of them. So when I talk about apple. Now in this apple what happens is the central core. Here you see the central core. This core actually consists of the remains of the ovary. So that ovary of the apple is only at this center. So only at the center core you have the remains of the ovary. But the fleshy part which we actually eat, that fleshy part is nothing but the thalamus. So thalamus is not a part of ovary, right? What is thalamus? I hope you all remember, like we spoke about flower, right? So if this is a flower, this is the stalk. So this is the stalk and the upper portion of the stalk is swollen. So that portion is thalamus, right? So in case of apple, the fruit is formed of by thalamus plus remains of ovary, right? So in apple, fruit is formed by thalamus plus some part of or some remains of ovary. Whereas what happens in case of pear? In pear again, the enlarged thalamus is the edible part. So here also the thalamus is the edible part and the core at the center with seeds is the ovary. So here in pear also you will have seeds here. So this central portion is the ovary and inside the ovary you have seeds. I mean both the structure of apple and pear are very similar and this portion is the thalamus. So here also if you see uh, the fruit is formed by thalamus plus remains of ovary. Right? Whereas in case of true fruit, what happens? The ovary itself matures or it gets ripened and the ovary itself consists of the seeds. For example, in tomato, this entire tomato is a is the ovary and inside that you have the seeds. Similarly, a banana. So now you understand the concept of true fruit and false fruit. So most of the fruits will come under the category of true fruits. So let us quickly distinguish between true fruit and false fruit. As I al already said, true fruit is the one which is derived from ovary, whereas false fruit is derived from ovary plus some other parts of the plant. True fruit is a superior fruit, whereas false fruit is an inferior fruit because in true fruit, 
the ovary becomes the important part so it is a superior fruit examples of true fruits would be mango watermelon grapes tomato whereas examples of false fruits would be apple pear strawberry they are all examples of false fruits now let us look at the edible parts of different fruits the apple as i already said in apple swollen thalamus is the edible part so it is the swollen thalamus mango in mango mesocarp is the edible part banana in banana the entire ovary which forms the fruit so this entire ovary is the edible part so in banana again you get two types of bananas one is the seed bananas without with seed and the other one is the seedless variety so now now you might wonder that when i was talking about true fruits i told that the ovary will have seeds but there are so many fruits which are also available without seeds how about seedless grapes or seedless banana or seedless watermelon now these seedless fruits are nothing but they are developed in two different ways one is the fruit develop without fertilization that means no fertilization took place no fusion between the uh, male gamete and the female gamete took place so in that case also the ovary will get ripened to form fruit but in that case there will be no seeds formed there will be no ovules involved so that is one way in which seedless fruits are developed there is another way where the ovules abort without producing mature seeds so the ov ovules do not get matured to form seeds so that is the second way now these days seedless fruits are commercially produced by various ways like vegetative propagation or by crossing different desired breeds of the fruit so as it is easier for consumption i mean to eat a seedless variety of fruit is easier than to eat a variety of fruit with seeds you will actually have to throw off the seeds so that is the reason why seedless varieties are commercially developed these days next is coconut so in coconut the edible part is the endosperm pineapple so again in pineapple ovary is the edible part so pineapple being a multiple fruit it is made up of many ovaries so and those ovaries are all edible in cilantro in cilantro so what is cilantro cilantro is nothing but the coriander leaves which we use so leaves are edible the coriander leaves and the fruits are also edible because uh, you would have you must be using the uh, as a spice spices coriander powder is used as a spice so there the fruits are used and for the, and the leaves are used for consumption directly the coriander leaves so here the edible part is leaves are also edible and fruits are also edible fruits are used as spices and leaves are also edible pear in pear again uh, ovary plus thalamus so the thalamus is again fleshy and that is edible thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again